go straight to on this uh, webinar uh, what you should know about driving in Portugal and a little bit of an electric vehicle special in the shape of Hugo Pinto uh, from Tesla Plus in Portugal. Good evening to you, Hugo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, everyone. So um, nice being here, nice being to nice being able to actually explain a little bit on our point of view regarding the Tesla community in Portugal and where this Tesla. Well, I'm pretty much sure that everybody knows where Tesla comes from, but I actually have five slides or something which are rather short into introduction of, of what we're doing and the way in which Tesla arrived in Portugal, basically. Uh, and then I would love to hear, uh, and I'm taking a peek at the chat as well, in such a way that we'd love to get a bit of a discussion regarding whether your experiences and your questions, we are uncertainties and so on. But to, to kickstart it rather quickly, I would love if you, let me just put a slideshow on and then play from start here. Sure. While you're finding that, Ugo, I invite everybody to ask questions in the chat or make comments, uh, feel free to do that. Thank you, uh, uh, Maria, who's already uh, uh, raising the flag for electric there. So, <laughs> okay. Okay, so there you go. I get, I see, uh, I believe you see this, right? So, yep. um, so re just to give you a very short intro uh, of the Portuguese uh, Tesla owner community in Portugal. Uh, obviously, I, I do believe that they, they take into, into account the amount of interest, the huge amount of interest that I was told that uh, you guys are having in electric cars and in electric motor ownership in Portugal. I do believe that everybody knows about Tesla. Uh, nonetheless, um, I would I would point in the fact that uh, there's a driving force in the, all of Tesla Gestalt, all of the Tesla ownership, which is the fact that Tesla is effectively an American company driven by its mission. We usually have this mission as something written on the walls for, for our employees to look at and contemplate during lunchtime. But these guys are absolutely driven by their mission, which is to accelerate the transition of the world to sustainable transport. Uh, so everything they do, including losing money, when they do lose money, is driven by the fact that they wholeheartedly intend to accelerate the transition of the world to sustainable transport. And most of the, the decisions and most of the history of the company goes uh, by, these, by, by, by these lines and has suffered in the past and is being vindicated right now uh, precisely because they were so hardcore in following the mission. So this is uh, talk, tell, telling you a little bit about Tesla is rather simple. It's an electric car company which started as a, a kind of an, an experiment whether you could prove that an, an electric car would could be fast and pretty and uh, nice to drive uh, without all those typical problems of uh, short uh, autonomy or short uh, or short or, or low low speed and uh, and they proved it by actually taking what was originally a lot of Lease, uh, and uh, configuring the thing in such a way that they pretty much strip the whole thing down, put in some batteries, small Lion batteries, like the ones we have on our portables, uh, portable computers. Nowadays, they're a bit more specialized, but it's pretty much the, the same kind of technology. And they built a prototype, which ended up becoming a production uh, car called the Tesla Roadster, which was a sports car for a very high fee. Uh, but uh, the idea would be that they would use this money to build a cheaper car, then they would use that money to build a cheaper car, and then electric cars would be massified. This, would, this was the overall vision. It really did, didn't go as neatly as this, but this was the overall thing. And right now they're offering, uh, with some ups and downs along the way, is pretty much the ones you, you have on screen. So they have the sedan, which is the Model S, the white one uh, on the left. They have the Model X, the one with the golf wings that you typically see uh, that go up, which is the SUV or the large SUV. Uh, then they have the Model 3, which is the, their layman car. Uh, it's still a bit ex more expensive than layman, I would say. Uh, but uh, it's, the, it's their cheaper car. Uh, and it's pre pretty much a city sedan, a smaller sedan, which is very drivable, very, very, very neat to drive. And uh, most recently on their offering, it's the Model Y, uh, which is basically a small SUV. So based on the same platform as the Model 3, but a bit a bit uh, on a higher driving position and um, a bit more comfortable for people that don't like to drive as low uh, on their cars. Uh, they actually, uh, as a funny inner joke of Tesla, they spell sexy. So uh, if you join them by the correct order, it's S, the 3, the X, and the Y. It's not the, one, the, the, the order that's laid out on screen, but it might just spell sexy. Uh, and so this is the offering of the company. Uh, in, they, it's obviously an American company. They came to Europe in late 2020. 
2012. Uh, and they started operating based on the Netherlands uh, from uh, Amsterdam. Oh, there's a typo there. Sorry about that. Uh, from Amsterdam and uh, receiving their cars uh, pre-assembled or uh, partly assembled in Tilburg uh, in the Netherlands. They were then assembled there for tax purposes and then shipped throughout Europe. In this moment, it was the only place that Tesla would sell cars in Europe. But this, uh, this is a company with massive fan base, with a massive amount of people that feel and identify with the mission. So they, many, owners, many owners would actually go and buy their cars in the Netherlands and bring them to, to pretty much every country around Europe. The same thing happened in Portugal. So when Tesla came to Portugal, uh, it only happened in 2017. So four something years ago. Um, officially started operations in January. This, this was actually when I bought my car uh so i was crazy but not as crazy as the guys that actually uh went and drove to to tilburg to get theirs um and a few dozen art car, art car owners had already gotten their their, their cars uh, directly from tesla uh, netherlands and from the very moment the very early moment on portugal has been one of the most active countries regarding tesla ownership and community building around uh, the tesla brand and community building around all of this concept and all of this ideal of driving a fast electric car that's also a clean bill for the environment. So do you have people, if you if you do a survey in our community, you see people that purchase the car because it's the green choice and they firmly believe uh, that's the right thing to do. And they have pe you have people that just wanted a fast car uh, and you get both um, guilt-free basically when you get actually get a Tesla. So, um, from the very the very early on, this was actually one of the first meetings uh, the community had. This was previous to Tesla. This is 2016, I guess. Uh, people wanted a service center, as you see in the center of the picture. We wanted to actually push for a service center uh, for cars to be serviced here in Portugal. There was none, uh, so people if they had a problem with their car, the car would actually go to France, and this happened. Uh, otherwise, you'd stay and you'd keep a very nice brick in your garage uh, up for a moment, in which eventually you get the opportunity for it to be serviced. So. So uh, from very early on, uh, the first few courageous owners actually got the cars and they we they built a, a drone video, very nice. They sent it to Tesla via Twitter and actually Elon Musk replied okay to this specific tweet and we got the service center. Uh, so that was actually nice. Uh, and we actually invited uh, Elon Musk to come over. Uh, I was already uh, in the community in this picture. Uh, and we we also made a second video, but we weren't as lucky. So we, we didn't, Elon didn't not come to, to Portugal for the inauguration of the service center, which was the purpose. But nonetheless, the idea is that the whole thing exploded in ownership from the moment that Tesla arrived in Portugal. From a few dozen cars, it quickly ended up to the hundreds, then now to the thousands. And we are around the, the 5,000 mem the 5, driver community in Portugal, more or less 500 at this point. There are no exact numbers. Uh, Tesla does not put them up and the, the Portuguese DGV, uh, none as well. So you need to go sideways to actually find them. One of the things that actually differentiate a Tesla ownership uh, from any other electric car up to this point, and there are some rumors that this might change in the future, is that um, buying a Tesla buys you a non-compromise uh, electric vehicle in the sense that you you have the same experience in actually accessing a charging network throughout Europe. Uh, I've driven from Portugal to Italy, to France, to and back uh, to Euro Disney and stuff like that with the kit. Uh, and with the exact same experience from charging in Portugal than I would have in Italy, uh, in France or Spain. Uh, and uh, this is an absolute advantage. This is a set of... Um, charging stations you usually get them by the dozen so when tesla opens one of these locations it's usually put eight to twelve one of these of these charging spots in the same location so you never have to wait and this only started very recently so we had zero of these sites in 2017 when tesla started operating then a couple more ended up in 2018 and now we have seven active locations two more locations will be coming up very very shortly they're i believe stuck in legalese uh but the idea is that you get uh, the um, you can just arrive there pick up the um, the, the charging station um, the and the plug plug it into your car and it immediately gets built to your account and the whole thing is transparent and very clean very very simple experience you do not get this if you try any other kind of electric mobility experience up to this point 
we do hope it changes in the future because it would be so much better for electric mobility overall and it would help accelerate the transition to sustainable transport right uh, so um, this is i believe one of the key advantages of owning a tesla the other key advantage of owning a tesla is actually us in Portugal, the community, and mm -hmm. I, 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 I usually don't say I'm, I'm, I'm actually not a very proud person, and I'm actually a modest person. But this has been a growing exponentially, and it's crazy. We are, we have, uh, we have a very, very large number of the owners, um, actually, in our both our closed Facebook group, the one you see there, Castle Club Portugal. Everybody's invited to join in. We welcome enthusiasts. Please do accept the rules, otherwise you will not be able to, to join us. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we, this has been exploding and one of the major, well, I would say differentiators uh, in most of Euro uh, European countries regarding ownership is the fact that we are indeed a very active community that promotes meetups, promotes um, um, pro, uh, surveys and constant dialogue with, with Tesla and with the multiple Tesla branches. And we actually have been uh, improving both the Tesla experience for Tesla customers and for uh, our new, new, new welcomed owners in both by, by having them join together in the community, but also by exerting some very vigorous dialogue uh, with Tesla in such a way that they do listen, they do respect us, and they, this is actually a Tesla-proof community. So they actually have a very open channel of communication. So this has been, this has been going quite successfully to, to, the, to the strangest statement that in 2017, we started this group with 100 something members. And now if you see there, and if you read Portuguese, it's uh, 15,400 members uh, between enthusiasts, owners, and people just interested in Tesla overall. And it still keeps a very good, very constructive vibe. You don't have these crazy posts, just throwing stuff around and picking up on people. We are very rigorous on it. And it actually has been improving quite a bit. So uh, it, most people that own the Tesla actually are on the Tesla Club Portugal as well. Um, and Nuno can attest for that afterwards <laughs> after my presentation. <laughs> okay, so uh, very short intro. What do you want to hear about uh, the, the experience of owning a Tesla? And how can I bring you some of our hard-earned knowledge into your um, questions regarding the way in which all this whole thing comes together? And from the moment I purchased the car to the moment I... Is it something that I need to recharge every night? It's pretty much all the same. The classical questions are typically, uh, how long does it take to charge? Um, what, what's the range? Um, do you uh, when do batteries wear out these these, yeah. these ones are the easy ones and we, we got them covered but try for the hard ones as well let's do that let's do that Ugo. um certainly battery life uh, people somebody did ask that tonight um, okay so let's go figure let's, yeah yeah <laughs> let's do can we deal with that one first of all absolutely so uh these are multiple variants of lion batteries so um, um lithium basically lithium based with different components for the cathode, basically. Uh, you don't need to be a chemist to understand this stuff, but it, the, the composition of, varies, uh, of the, the, the batteries vary quite a bit. And um, the, the main thing to, to think about is that the car does not have one battery. The car has usually 6,000 small batteries from uh, yeah, from um, from wheel to wheel, uh, wow. the whole underside of the car is basically six thousand small batteries, uh, small cells, uh, like the ones we have on our laptops, and you do not exercise them uh, all at the same time. So you have this computer balancing uh, each of those small cells in such a way that it maximizes the lifespan of the cell, uh, and so uh, this is actually one of was actually one of the advantages for the that roaster uh, car that I was mentioning. Because you actually can guarantee that the computer keeps the healthy uh, state for all of these 6,000 batteries back and forth uh, and uh, allows you to uh, discharge and recharge up to the optimum levels for each of those cells. Moreover, uh, originally for the previous cars and the, for the, the original generation of cars, so 2012 to 2016, something like this, this was basically off the shelf batteries. So they actually went to the same providers uh, for laptops and they purchased in bulk these small cells and they, they would build the packs together. Right now, Tesla has been improving quite a bit on the chemistry of the cells in such a way that um, together with some very advanced research uh, on some, uh, some US universities, they have been maximizing the lifespan. I'll give you an idea. From the previous generation, you have this car, which is a taxi in the Netherlands. And it's been, the car itself has 1,400,000 
uh, one million four hundred thousand kilometers um, uh, of driving, and uh, it did swap batteries once because the first failed at three three hundred uh, something uh, three hundred something thousand uh, kilo, uh, kilometers. But since then, so nearly for one million kilometers, the car has been running on the same battery pack. So, and this is a guy that runs the car nonstop. Uh, well, it's, that's it's very impressive. Uh, so. Uh, you do see that some of the early batteries, they had a high, higher failure rate, of course. It was, this was off-the-shelf technology. They were learning as they went mm -hmm. uh, because they were really trying to accelerate the transition to a sustainable world, right? Uh, and they were trying hard. Uh, and they failed hard as well sometimes. Uh, but um, uh, they were learning, learning as they went. And now the new, the, we are probably on the third and a half fourth generation of battery chemistries and they keep getting better so uh, most of these uh, improvements go into the way in which the battery discharges and the way in which the battery creates or exempts the creation of these small crystal structures on the anode that end up uh, creating degradation on the battery and ruining your battery experience so uh, that's the first question so battery battery life is really really lengthy your car will probably um, be well recycled, uh, handed over, whatever, before your your recent battery, your 2020 battery eventually um, gives its, whole, its soul to the creator, right? Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, there's also the second question associated with this. Oh, but batteries are a massive polluter. You guys are destroying the environment. Uh, and usually this brings, this gets my... Uh, my my headline just crashed because it, this is actually not true. Batteries, contrary to petrol, you can actually recycle them. The, there there are processes now in place that you can actually actually smash the whole battery after it left the car, after it went to a second life, providing energy to a house or to a power utility, uh, and after so after all these two lives, when the battery is indeed chemically dead, you can actually crunch the whole thing put it on the centrifuge because these things have different densities and make it make it go through a series of chemical processes and re-extract a large amount of lithium, cobalt, uh, and all of these components and actually make new batteries, batteries with it. When you run on dinosaur juice, your cars, you cannot do this. Uh, because we will be, <laughs> we will be the dinosaur juice sixty-five million, million, million years from now, right? Uh, so uh, this is a major, major, major differentiator, which sometimes gets attacked on the wrong angle. This is actually wrong. This is we are on the first generation of extracting lithium from the earth, because after that it will become more and more residual as people get to recycle more and more of the park of these batteries. And there's an economic incentive in actually not leaving them in the landfill because this stuff is worth money. It's worth real money. It's 600 kilos of hardcore materials that you can use to actually make new batteries. It's not like these small batteries here from phones, and even these get recycled, but even smaller devices in which the ratio of effort and energy to actually extract the components from those batteries, it's it's very, very difficult to justify. But this is these are not. These are very, very heavy batteries, and you actually have the economic incentive to not 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 let them go to a landfill and actually recycle them and get them back into a circular economy. Amazing! I'm loving your enthusiasm. <laughs> um, so, so, so some of these some of these grumpy Brits tonight are saying, "Is this Tesla night?" Well, yes, it is for the moment, and I'm loving I'm loving this enthusiasm. You ought to try it sometimes, guys. Um, mm -hmm. And they say, "Is he a salesman?" You're not actually not at all. Person. I win no, zero okay. euros. <laughs> all right. So, so for those cynics who, oh, yeah, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? He's selling Teslas. Tell us. I you're should. Not, I should be. <laughs> you should. You definitely should. But you're not, are you? No, I'm not. I'm a software engineer, actually. So no, I'm not. Okay. And you're just an enthusiast, and that's what I love about Tesla. I mean, what, what one of the difficult questions here? You know, you, you're definitely the Apple of the of the motoring world, aren't you? And maybe the mar, maybe the marmite of the motoring world, which is a metaphor that might not work terribly well for Portuguese people. But it, it, you are dividing people, I think, you know, the, 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 tes, the Tesla um, movement, if you like. Why don't you share your charging points? You know, you might be <laughs> in for a surprise. <laughs> OK, yes, I hope so. Uh, actually, uh, Tesla is setting up uh, the network uh, to share the charging spots. Um, and this will happen in the near future and it will start in Europe. There so you, you go. There uh, you so go. There you go. Uh, because <laughs> they go by their mission, which is to accelerate the transition of the world to sustainable transport and they live by it. So I do think that they, well, it, it, it's, 
it's a life cycle thing, right? <clears throat> so you you had this point up and until which Tesla would need the supercharging uh, network to actually keep growing because, yeah. uh, well, it was the major differentiator and most people would get the cars just because of the supercharging network. Yes. Uh, right now, I well, I think they, they are getting on, onto this plateau in which you don't see the influence of the supercharging station. Pro this is my extrapolation. Huh? Uh, that, that heavily. And they, would, they are actually trying to wait in the opportunity of uh, if we open this, the, there's increasing revenue. But also, if we don't open it, there will there'll be competition arriving uh, in each of these geographies. And we will eventually be locked into our corner if we all want to open it one day. So the hell with it. Let's open it. Very uh, and good. This, this is my interpretation of it. And they are opening it pretty much up until the end of the year, most probably early next year at most, I guess. There you go, you naysayers and you grumpy bums <laughs> who are having a go at Tesla. Thank you so much, Hugo. Your, 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 your uh, appreciation, your enthusiasm is so obvious. Uh, somebody who was more dependent on the dinosaur juice, as you put it, was Nuno Mendes, who's with us as well, a friend of yours. Now, he was ha quite happy with his uh, conventional car. Uh, so let's hear from Nuno. Now, thank you so much, Hugo. Uh, let's hear from Nuno, a convert. Oh, sorry, go on. Guys, guys, just let me tell you something. I'll hold on for a few minutes more, but uh, I, as I told you, I am actually at the bridal house. You've got uh, and to I'm try helping some dresses on. Okay. Uh, of course, they, they, yes. they look so, so good on me. No, I'm yeah. actually helping a friend. So uh, uh, I, I always say that. Dramatically, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would need to dramatically apologize uh, if I drop out because uh, I, just, I just wanted to actually bring you the first seeds of this experience, go to Tesla Club Portugal on Facebook, accept the rules if you don't mind, otherwise we won't let you in. You're more than welcome to express yourselves in English there and uh, to actually put up these on, or many more questions as you please, put up the hard ones. Oh, we love excellent. those. Thank you so much. So how many car brand drivers say things like that and are so <laughs> enthusiastic, I wonder? Thank um, you all so much. Not at all, Hugo. Let's go to Ununu now, who's the convert. Who, he was driving on the road to Damascus almost, and had a conversion experience uh, to the Tesla. Uh, Nuno, tell us what happened with you, if you will, briefly. And yes, before we go to Nuno, this, we are talking about driving in Portugal, so you will learn this evening how to drive on a Portuguese roundabout, and not on a Portuguese roundabout, but how to go around the Portuguese roundabout correctly, which I know can be difficult for some of you expats, so stay tuned. Umberto Cavalho from ACP will be with us soon, but let's hear what happened with Nuno. Hello, good evening all. Good evening, Thanks. live from Scout Camp. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm so sorry if uh, you can hear some noise, but uh, <laughs> well, it is what it is, okay? <laughs> Until now, it, the thing, it's, uh, it's quiet, it's okay. quiet. Okay. Uh, well, th thank you so much for having me. Uh, first, uh, before all, let me confirm that uh, Hugo is a very humble guy. <laughs> uh, so it is, it is, it's true. And uh, the Facebook group of Tesla, it really helps. Um, this summer, so this summer, like a month ago, uh, I was in Algarve and my car starts doing a noise. And I just go... Hi. Oh, Isabel, if you could mute up, that'd be... Uh, sorry, Isadora, I do beg your pardon. <laughs> Hello to you, by the way, and, and to your young family there. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> And I just uh, go to the Facebook group and search for what could be. And uh, I, I saw what, uh, what uh, my car has. And uh, I saw that I, I can drive and it's not a huge problem. I, this I can story still my later. heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. I solve it later, uh, which I did uh, when once arrived the Lisbon. So it's a face, it's a group that uh, really helps. Well, like all groups, we we have people that are uh, in a good mood, others that sometimes are, aren't. But uh, well, it's a group. It's an open group. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> bye 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 Hugo. So um, regarding the experience of having a Tesla and how I uh, I bought a Tesla. Um, uh, first, I, I, I'm used to use uh, uh, BMWs or uh, Audis or Mercedes, uh, and I was never, never uh, a, a crazy guy or a fan for some brand. 
Uh, so uh, one day I changed my a Audi A6 for um, a Hyundai Santa Fe, which I love the Hyundai much more than the, the Audi. So uh, I'm not a, a fan from any brand. Uh, uh, and my car was uh, 13 years. I expect that the car years for 20 years more. <laughs> That's all I, I want. And uh, a friend of mine uh, bought a Tesla and uh, I, he showed me the car and I said to him, well, congratulations. And uh, he just, uh, but, but all my interest is, okay, it's a good car. Uh, and he, he only asked me, but you already did the figures? The figures? Did you know how much you spend with your car and how much you can spend with a Tesla? And the thing stays in my mind. And uh, when I arrived home at night, I, I opened an Excel spreadsheet and I put the, the, the numbers. And the first numbers that which I achieved, I, I look at, at them and they say to me, well, uh, I did some, something wrong. And instead of confirming all the formulas, I started a new one. And I, I achieved the same numbers. And in that night, I entered at uh, Tesla's uh, website. And in 40, 48 hours, I, I bought two Teslas for the company. <laughs> so, Wait, because well, I take I, it you were impressed. I, I, I was spending four, 400, uh, 400 uh, euros a month, which drops uh, for 100 euros a month. <laughs> to 200 euros. So you saved no, no, 300. 400 to 100 euros. Okay. That's quite a saving. I can see why um, yes. a, a numbers man like yourself was so influenced in this, in this yes. regard. Yes. On- only for this, but before I do all my research about um, how many kilometers can I drove and so on. Uh, saying that, I could say now that I'm totally crazy for my Tesla. Right. First of all, it's not a car. It's not a car. It's, uh, <laughs> it's yes, it's true. It's true. It's, uh, it's a computer. It's an all new experience. It's very secure. I can tell you that uh, my brother-in-law once was driving and the car comes and, and will hit him. And the Tesla took full control of the driving and just, and the other don't, didn't hit the car of my the tesla of my brother-in-law so it's very secure it helped us uh especially in huge drivings but also uh, i don't know how you call that in, in english when we are uh, with a huge traffic and we go go and stop go and stop uh, there are a function in the tesla when you could put that in autopilot and uh, he do the wall. <laughs> yes. Okay. Amazing. Incredible. Okay. So safe to say you are a, con a convert. You're a changed man as a result of this, but, but, <laughs> but presumably quite skeptical at first, never bothered about cars. Um, thank you so much, Nuno. Maybe I think you've got to go and eat beans or baked potatoes by the fireside now. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Yeah, something like that. All right. Keep, well, it's really good of you. I uh, think. Yeah, really good of you to join us. Do appreciate it. Of course, Nuno is our Winsurance man. If you're thinking, where have I seen this guy before? He is from Winsurance. Uh, joins me on the morning show every month. So we have a great chat from whichever part of the country he's in or scout camp that he's on. And as you can see here, I think it's so fascinating, um, this whole thing. And there is, there's clearly some, some um, I don't know what we would call it, but I, I, I think it's, it, it's, it's, it's normal for a, a disruptive technology to cause such differences of opinion and polarity. And there you are right in the middle of all of that. Um, and, and it's what they said about the internet, even what was it? Um, oh, Bill said, you know, the internet will never catch on. So maybe it's a similar thing with, with, the, with the Teslas. And, and Steve Jobs, you know, you, he was said that, that his computers were bicycles for the mind. 
And uh, I think we need a new description, don't we? Which I I trust people will come up with in the chat this evening um, as we go to Umberto Cavalier. But before we do that, thank you so much, Nuno. Really appreciate it making time for us. Let me just say that uh, to have an electric car, whatever the the brand, an electric car, uh, you you need to be very disciplined. It's the question of discipline to charge every time you can. Yes. So that's a Thank different for mindset. That. Yeah, dinosaur juice is everywhere, isn't it? You don't have to worry about that. You can, you can just be, put your yeah, five euros here and then five euros again tomorrow. <laughs> you, you can't think like that with an electric. Thank you so much, Nuno. Appreciate it. Bon okay. See you. Thank Ciao, you. Thank see, you. See you soon. I'm so sorry for leaving now. It's, uh... <laughs> it's good of you to fit us in, honestly. Really great. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. onward then. On this webinar tonight, uh, what you should know about driving in Portugal. Very special guest. Well, guest tonight, Isadora is here from ACP, as is Umberto Cavallo. Good evening to you, Umberto. Thank you for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Oh, we'll have to unmute you, sir. Well, good evening to go. all. Uh, I'm going to, uh, to try to give some help to, to everybody who, who drives in Portugal. Um, we are going to talk about uh, some rules and, and I'm going to try to give some help uh, in the name of the ACP. Um, uh, I think everybody knows the ACP. We are the biggest club in Portugal and uh, we give support to many areas in, uh, in which we have the drivers. Uh, we support the drivers when they are um, learning. We support the professional drivers. And today uh, I have prepared something uh, to help everybody to know a little bit more of our roads uh, and uh, our uh, things. I'm going to start to share with you. Um, Are you seeing okay? We've got it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, As about um, this uh, road safety rules, uh, it's important to know that uh, there are many rules and many signs in, in all the countries. In Portugal, we have many, and um, they are not uh, very different so that uh, we find in Spain, in in France, and in the other countries. Uh, The big difference, I think, it's uh, to England, it's the the, the wrong side. I don't know if uh, we are in the wrong side or the English, but uh, I'm not (laughs) discussing that. They're going to let you know, Umberto, you know that. They're going to be telling you in the chat. (laughs) But uh, we have uh, some rules that are important. Uh, the first one, um, and I want to uh, talk about uh, this, um, has to be um, is to look to the road environment and to see that uh, it's a space that is shared with uh, many other people, with many other users. Uh, they are all different. Uh, we have rules for uh, all of them, but uh, we have to see things uh, at this uh, site. Uh, we have to look that safety is always first. So uh, our traffic regulation has got many rules and signs to everybody uh, with this uh, main goal to to give to all safety first. Um, Many times people expect uh, to see uh, everything uh, written in the rules. There are many rules that aren't uh, written um, like, like we say, I, I can give you an example that uh, uh, we give uh, uh, a lot of time in our training sessions that uh, um, is, uh, if it's possible, someone in Portugal to drive uh, with flip-flops or uh, with high heels. Um, it's a big discussion. Uh, when we have uh, training sessions, everybody talks about that. And we have uh, all uh, the, the opinions. Uh, some think that we can, others uh, think that it's not possible. But uh, if you look and if you read uh, our traffic regulations, you cannot find uh, the word flip flops or, or you cannot find high heels. Uh, what we find is some regulations that say that we have all to put safety first, or, or we, uh, we can do anything in generally that can uh, put safety uh, at last. So this is the first uh, thing that I want to share. Uh, We are not uh, a good driver because we um, can know and we can follow all the rules. We are a good driver if we put the safety first in our uh, driver's 
experience, okay? So uh, the first thing uh, that uh, it's uh, needed and it's uh, something that it's very different. So uh, to the Englishman, uh, it's a big difference is uh, the roundabouts. The roundabouts uh, are in generally crossroads. Uh, the, the, the big difference is that we have here some obstacle. Um, they have uh, two goals that are uh, make it easier so that when we arrive here, we can pass uh, much more safely than in a crossroad. And the uh, other goal is um, in, the, in the long road, uh, I can break the, the speed uh, and I can make the drivers safe. But uh, we have a rule that I can explain with this next slide. Um, that this is, in general, the, the rules to, uh, to make the roundabout in Portugal. Uh, we have the, the three situations uh, that uh, can learn uh, that we can learn. The first one is the orange one, and it says that uh, in the roundabout, when we arrive, if we, if we want to uh, make the first exit, we have uh, to go on the right side and only on the right side, on the, this side. It's not allowed to uh, go to the other side, and it's also dangerous. If we want to go in the other exit, that is not the first, we have to do as the red or as the green ones are doing. We have to go not to the right one because it's not authorized. We have to do something like that. And then we have to put the, the vehicle now in the right before we can uh, exit the roundabout. It's something that it's difficult Sometimes it uh, makes some accidents because uh, not too many people know the rules. And uh, after that, there are also uh, many people that know the rule, but they want to uh, make a point. They want to pass by the other drivers and they, not, uh, they don't do this right. So what we have here, it's the right way to do the roundabouts. Generally, it's uh, the first one. And the others, we have to do this one. There are some exceptions, and, and it's needed to be careful. If we are um, riding a bike uh, without no engine, we uh, can go all the roundabout uh, by the right lane. But we have to be careful when the other drivers uh, can uh, exit because we have to let them pass. Uh, the big, the big ones, uh, uh, the the great cars, um, the heavy ones uh, that, uh, as, as we see in Portugal, they can also do all the roundabout by the right, but they also have to be careful when the others want to get uh, the exit because they have to let them pass. It's dangerous. We have uh, some accidents, but in generally, uh, in the last years. We have uh, make big improvements in our uh, circulation and this uh, roundabout. The next one that it's also uh, a thing that we have to know, especially in the cities, have to do with the bus route, the, the bus routes. I uh, put here uh, this image that is from Lisbon, uh, and it's uh, probably because of that. The bus lanes uh, are in generally only to the buses. In Portugal, it's uh, uh, also for the taxis, but the other cars cannot use it unless they want to uh, get into a garage, a park, uh, they can turn right, and then they can put uh, at the wrong, uh, at this uh, lane, and they can go by this lane. In Lisbon and in Oporto, by the buses and the taxis, it's also needed to, to know that uh, the, the bikes can also use this lane. But it's only in Lisbon and no Porto because this depends on the mayor's authorization and the other cities don't have uh, this. So in the other cities, this lane is only for the buses and only for the taxis. In Lisbon and no Porto, the bikes can use it and the other cars can use it when they want to turn right when they want to park their, their car, okay? Uh, other thing that it's important, it's the speed. 
before we get to the speed limit, uh, it's important to say that the speed is in Portugal and in, in, all, in all the countries, the, the main cause of the accident. Other thing that it's uh, important to say is that uh, the speed is always dangerous because, because when I, I give more speed to my car, I make also a more risk uh, to have an accident. And in case of an accident, uh, it's worse for me and for all the people that are in the place, uh, in the car or in the street with me. So uh, the first thing that we need to know is that uh, the speed uh, is a choice, uh, is a driver's choice. Uh, we, uh, in Portugal, there are only a place when, uh, where we have uh, a minimum speed limit that it's in the, we call autostrada, uh, the auto routes, the, the autobahns, like in Germany, that the minimum speed is uh, 50 kilometers. It's the only place when we have this. The other places haven't got any minimum uh, limit of speed, only have in general these ones that we have here. This one's for the towns, uh, this one for uh, out of towns, this one is for uh, a route that it's uh, like uh, an auto route, an autobahn, but it's a little bit different. So he has uh, a speed uh, of 100. And then the uh, most uh, quality speeds that we have, the most quality uh, roads that we have, the speed limit is 120. Uh, many people uh, talk and, and um, ask if uh, we cannot push this uh, up and go to uh, 200, I don't know, 300, but it's important to, to look uh, that the speed uh, it's the main cause of the accidents in Portugal and uh, in other countries, so it's needed to be careful. Uh, in general, this is for our country, uh, the speed limits for all the cars, the, the bikes, uh, the heavy ones, um, the, 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 the work ones, we have here all the speed limits. The ones I think that are uh, most important are these ones because it's um, our cars uh, when we drive uh, our cars. And um, I can give you, oh, sorry, uh, an example. Uh, the uh, lower limit that we have, that it's 20 kilometers, it's uh, to the, we call in Portugal, it's a, a hard name uh, for those who aren't uh, Portuguese, that it calls zonas de coexistência. Basically, there are, some uh, neighbors uh, who are uh, very, very um, uh, straight, uh, we, where we have uh, many people uh, walking, when we have uh, schools, when we have uh, the, the, uh, uh, great danger uh, because of uh, many people in the place. So the speed limit is only 20. Then uh, after that, uh, as I said earlier, the speed limit to the towns is 50. After that, we have 90, then we have 100, and the highest one is 120. Uh, for those who uh, have uh, a trailer, it's important to know that when we have a trailer, the speed is lower. So uh, as we exit the cities, the speed limits are always lower for those ones who have uh, any trailer. And then uh, for those who uh, ride some bike, the speed limits are for the bikes, uh, this, the same ones that we have for the cars. So uh, the main issues, I think it's uh, these uh, two lanes. So in general, if I uh, want to uh, know it's uh, necessary to know only this one's 20 uh, in the, uh, the dangerous areas in towns, 50 in the towns, 90 when I, when I exit the towns, 100 in the, uh, those, those ones who, who look like an autobahn, uh, uh, and then 120 in the better ones. This is for the speed limit. Uh, now, uh, our other thing that I think that it's important is to uh, look out the, um, the rules for 
uh, children's transport. Uh, many uh, victims of the accidents are children. Uh, and they um, they haven't any guilt uh, of what is happened because they trust in the driver. And sometimes the driver um, forgets he, that he's uh, responsible for children's safety. In Portugal, we have straight rules about that. Uh, and I think those one who have we have children or, or we have uh, granddaughters, uh, they know uh, the rules. The first one is that all the kids who have uh, until one meter and 35 or until uh, 12 years old, they all have to use uh, a, a special um, uh, that we call a chair uh, generally, so they can uh, drive in the cars with safety. Uh, in Portugal, uh, we, uh, as in Europe, because this is a, a European regulation, we have uh, these five groups that uh, are divided uh, to uh, the according uh, the uh, the weight of the children. Uh, they uh, they as they are born, and then uh, after that they can they can uh, achieve twelve years old or one meter and thirty five. When they achieve one of these goals, it's the uh, the time when they left this uh, this rule. But until then, they have to use some of these seats. Uh, I'm going to show some of these seats that uh, are uh, with these codes that are in the the bottom. And generally, the uh, the little ones, uh, the babies, like we said, in Portugal, uh, we give uh, a social name to this chair that it's uh, egg, uh, it's uh, something that we use to call uh, to this chair. In general, is for the babies. Uh, many times they can go here until they have uh, three years old, uh, but we have to see all uh, the, the, his weight and also uh, how, how, how old is him. Uh, and it, the, it goes backwards and it's, um, we, uh, put the, the seat belt and the baby has two seat belts, one to be secure in the chair that we call the egg and the other to uh, put the egg secure in the car. Uh, today, uh, many cars have a system that we call Isofix and uh, the, the chair, uh, it's uh, in the Isofix system, so it's safer. Then when the children grows up in generally, they uh, have another chair. They go not on the backwards. They are seeing uh, the right way. And they have uh, uh, also two seat belts, one for the chair, one for the children. When they grow older, and this um, generally is the last one, sometimes it has uh, something in his backs, sometimes it has not. He, uh, when uh, we can um, put them there, but we have to see all uh, in, the, in this question, we have to see uh, everything that goes from the weight and uh, from the, uh, uh, the earlier age. So we have uh, something like that in our stores. If someone uh, knows, uh, want to know, uh, or if you want to buy uh, some of these uh, chairs, we have in our stores and we can give all the information. Uh, I make this alert, uh, the children uh, can only left the safety chairs when they got one of the two things or um, two, 12 years old or one meter and 35. This, this last one is the most important one because these children, uh, maybe uh, she, he can uh, have 14 years old but uh, if he's not tall enough, the seat belt will press his uh, back and uh, it's dangerous to have an accident. So if you want to know more, and uh, some of you uh, maybe are associated because uh, many of you uh, as already know ACP, if you want more information or if you want to buy something uh, with high quality, we have it in our stores. Uh, now, we are uh, talking uh, a team that it's uh, most uh, important because uh, it's one of the biggest mistakes that the drivers do uh, in Portugal. 
and uh, in all the countries. Um, in Portugal, I think uh, uh, the, the the statistics of the accidents uh, of the accidents say that uh, one third of the deaths are in accidents where uh, someone has uh, alcohol, or the driver, or the drivers, or um, sometimes someone who is walking uh, in the street. So this is important, and this is uh, a big issue for the driver. Uh, we have to know that uh, the, the advice that the legal authorities give is uh, don't drink and drive. Uh, we have many campaigns in all the countries. England is uh, one of the countries where we have more uh, safety campaigns uh, in this uh, team. Uh, and all, all of them say the same things. If you want to drive, you cannot drink. If you want to drink, you cannot drive. Uh, and uh, today, I think this is important because um, uh, until uh, some years ago, we had to uh, drive and because we haven't got any transport. Uh, today, we uh, know that this is not right. Uh, the ACP uh, has got many solutions to this one. And... Uh, and drive. We have some limits that uh, it's important to know because um, they are one. Uh, the most important ones are those who are here because the first ones, it's to the professional drivers. If someone here is a professional driver, the, uh, the limits uh, to, the, uh, to the alcohol in our blood, it's lower. But uh, to the general drivers, uh, the limit that we have to respect is 0 This is important because for many people, uh, because it's not the same thing to all of us, uh, we have uh, 40 people watching uh, today. Uh, if uh, all the 46 uh, people drink the same thing, same value to uh, all the people. So... It's important to know that each one has to be to the, the limit zero point five. Until this limit is very dangerous to drive, but this is possible. If we pass this limit zero point five, it's very very dangerous. And uh, we can uh, have a fine. The fine, it's uh, the minimum, it's 250 euros, and uh, it can go to up to this uh, value. If I pass the limit of 0 0.8, uh, I have a fine much more heavier, and uh, it's more more likely to have an accident. Uh, it's important to uh, say that uh, in the both cases, beyond the uh, ticket that I have, it's possible to, to have our driver's license uh, suspended by one month to 12 months in here, or here it can go for two months until two years. So it's difficult to uh, have this situation. The last one, it's very important because uh, it's very, very dangerous uh, and it's a crime. When we pass the limit of 1.2, it's a crime and I can be uh, held to prison until one year. And in Portugal, uh, sometimes people uh, think that this is not applied, but it's applied many times because we have many people who continuous drive uh, and drunk uh, for many, many times, and then uh, they, go, they go arrested until one year old. So it's important to, uh, have, to be very careful because uh, beyond the fines, beyond the suspension of our driver's license, the, the most important thing is to see that this is dangerous. This can make uh, a big mess in the traffic. We can have uh, uh, many, many dangerous accidents 
So uh, I appeal to all to don't drink and drive. Uh, another thing that it's important, it's uh, the safety belt. Um, if any uh, of you have any doubt, in Portugal, all the passengers beyond the driver has uh, to use the safety belt. We haven't got any legal uh, authority that uh, do not oblige to uh, use the safety belt. And I also say that uh, beyond the regulation, it's also very, very dangerous to use, to drive and don't use a safety belt. Um, I can give you, I could, could give you many examples, but uh, the, we have some studies that say that only um, the safety belt uh, is an invention of old in the 50s. And uh, in the 20th century, uh, studies that say that he can uh, actually save more than 1 million people in drivers uh, and uh, passengers. I appeal to all, uh, don't drive without safety belts. Don't let anyone go in so, uh, because uh, sometimes the animals uh, uh, in the car and they have to be with a safety belt also. So uh, if they dangerous for us also. Uh, another, it's the bicycles, because uh, many of us can be also, uh, uh, can ride the bike uh, when it's needed. So in Portugal, the bikes uh, have some rules that they have uh, to follow. Uh, one of the things that is important to say, it's uh, we, in Portugal, it's not needed to have a driver's license uh, to drive the bicycle. Uh, it's free. Anyone can drive it. But uh, we have to follow rules. In general, the rules are the same ones that the cars. We have to respect the signs. We have to respect the pedestrians. We have to go uh, on, the, on the street uh, with uh, some uh, careful uh, and many, many attention to the other drivers. And in some places, in Portugal, many uh, cities have these uh, lanes, especially for the bicycles. It's important to say that if I have a special lane for me, it's better and it's safe, safer to use it than to go in the street. But uh, one of the things that are important to say is that the, the bicycles have many accidents. And many of us can also have this, that experience that it's dangerous to uh, ride a bike uh, in our cities. So uh, if uh, I can give you an advice, it's uh, to um, be very careful with the rules. But uh, one of the things that uh, I can also give you an advice is to have an insurance. Because uh, in Portugal, the insurance are uh, only um, uh, uh, for the, the, the cars and the motorcycles, uh, but uh, the bikes, uh, they don't need to have an insurance, but uh, it's better to have one because if I have an accident with another person or with another car, if I have an insurance, the insurance pays for the damage that I cause. If I haven't got an insurance, I have to pay for my own pocket. So uh, I can give you an example. If you uh, break this to a car uh, when we are uh, in the traffic, in many times, this, uh, this piece can uh, afford to pay uh, 300 euros to someone. If you have uh, an insurance to our bike, uh, uh, in the ACP insurance, we can give you that solution. And you pay, I think it's under 20 euros for an, an, an entire year. And if you have a crash, uh, the insurance is going to pay all the damages. So. It's important to uh, be careful with that because uh, we have to be careful when we ride the bicycle, especially in the cities, but it's also important to have an insurance to be safer, safer for, for us. Uh, another big issue in the drivers 
is uh, the mobile phones uh, and devices. Uh, I, I cannot say to you um, uh, to, to left your devices uh, because we are addicted to this uh, uh, one. Uh, I don't know anyone who, who hasn't got uh, a mobile phone. Uh, and uh, it seems like that uh, today uh, we cannot uh, afford to, to, to many things, but the mobile phones are a part of our human body. Uh, the, the children, I think, they, they born also uh, with a mobile phone in his hands and they uh, can use it uh, for the first days. So uh, it's very important to, to know that the mobile phones are uh, in these days one of the highest risks of accidents in the European Union. And it's one of the things that uh, we uh, have more, more uh, fear because uh, we cannot control it. Everybody says that, that, that it's dangerous, but then when we are driving, you, we use the mobile phone. So we have to think that uh, it's not right, it's dangerous, and we have to leave this behind. Uh, in Portugal, uh, it's forbidden to use uh, mobile phones like we see here, but it's also uh, dangerous and uh, it's not uh, uh, allowed to use uh, in, the, uh, in the texting or a dangerous thing that are uh, the, the social part of our life. Um, uh, the, the first danger that we know about mobile phones was for the last 30 years um, when, it, when we call to someone. It's very dangerous, but uh, sometimes we don't see it like that. So uh, we drive and we call to the phone to everybody. Uh, and sometimes we haven't got anything to say. It's uh, our addiction to the phone. Uh, and this is dangerous because uh, our brain uh, cannot do the, both things at the same time. Our brain can only concentrate its efforts in the phone or in the drivers. So uh, what we are going to do is to put more risk in our uh, driver's uh, time. But it's dangerous uh, also when we uh, send some text message or when we uh, put uh, some like uh, or uh, some other uh, reactions in the social area because we are uh, looking to the mobile phone. We are looking so uh, what we see uh, here and we forgot for all the, the drivers. In Portugal, it's a bad situation. We can pay uh, a fine, a high fine with this. And it's uh, also dangerous because we, have, uh, we can have our driver's license suspended for one month to one year. So uh, it's needed to be very careful. Uh, there are no exceptions. I give you an alert. Today, sometimes people are um, controlled by the legal authorities driving with, uh, as like I am, or, or with the, the two phones. It's not legal authorized to use uh, the both phones. We can only use one. Uh, and uh, I, I'm going to do something that you are going to remember. Uh, if I am uh, using one, but the other one, it's uh, uh, in the down. I can also uh, be uh, wear with a fine because uh, we only have to, to wear one. If you want to wear, the advice that I give you is to cut one of them. So uh, it's, not, uh, it's not possible uh, to have a fine if I only have one of these. So uh, the advice is to be safe. It's very dangerous. We have many accident, accidents. So uh, the people uh, talk on their phone and uh, drive at the same time. Um, I, I, I don't know how to make some joke in English, but I'm going to try. Um, <laughs> in, uh, sometimes we say that uh, uh, women can do many things at the same time. Uh, I believe they can, but uh, with phone and the drivers, it's not possible, even if, if uh, we are a woman, okay? So uh, don't drink, <laughs> drive, and don't drive and use mobile phones. It's very dangerous. Uh, but uh, I also uh, call your attention to one of the things that uh, 
it's not the mobile phone, but today we have in our cars uh, the GPS. We have um, uh, the, the radio that can give you uh, a TV uh, online. It's very, very dangerous to use uh, those things also. Uh, if, we, if we are able to drive, only to drive, uh, it's, uh, it's great. Uh, uh, the best uh, uh, safety uh, um, advice that I, that I know, it's one of the uh, English campaign that, that it says that the good drivers just drive. So this is my advice for you all. Um, Thank you, Umberto. Can I can I just step in there for a moment? Yes. yes. Um, we we um, we need to finish before nine, and there are two particular areas of interest for our community here that I know are in your upcoming slides. And what I'd like to do is invite you back to be, because you know you have a very comprehensive presentation which covers all aspects of driving in Portugal. And and could I ask you to conclude for the time being on the on the car documents because there's big interest okay. in licensing, it's, it's, but also. It's... It's the, the follow one. Yep, yeah, and and the one after that. If we could if we could conclude there, so we've got time for Q and A. Um, what okay. you have to have inside your car when you're when 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 you're first okay. driving in Portugal. That'd it's, be wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate I'm it. going to talk next in Portugal. Uh, when I when I drive my car, I have to have some documents. Uh, and uh, uh, in Portugal, we, be, we need the, the both ones, uh, the driver's license and the ID, because they are saying, uh, one thing is my ID, another thing is our driver's license. Uh, so uh, for me, I can have, uh, it's needed to have two papers. For the the car, uh, the of the instant, the technical inspection, and the insurance guarantee. It's the ones that we have uh, for our for our job. Uh, I give uh, I ask your attention also to um, the trailers. Many of you can drive uh, your car with a trailer, and it's needed. To be careful because if the need to have the papers, but if your trailer is the one uh, that we see here, it's the heavy one. You have to have some papers of your car and your trailer. And also, is important to know that uh, to drive a car with this trailer, it's not need to have a driver. Oh, we're having some real problems hearing you, unfortunately. A different driver's license. Are, are, are you hearing me? Because we um we lost you on the all important yes. documents. Um, with we lost your audio. Can, so can, can you can you go back okay. a slide and tell us what you need on uh, to carry with okay. you when you're driving? Are you are you listening now? We got you now. That's it. Yeah, that okay. one. That one. So, so uh, um, in Portugal, we have uh, five things that are needed. Uh, to, the driver has to have his ID and his driver's license. Uh -huh. Two things. The car has to be uh, with his ID, yeah. uh, the technical inspection, and the insurance guarantee. Perfect. For all. For all. If it's needed to uh, to 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 have these papers and uh, and if you need any help. In the ACP, we have uh, uh, many uh, help on this uh, area. Uh, oh, the other thing that it's needed to be careful is with the trailers. So those one who drive trailers, if it's a little trailer, it's not needed to have a different paper. And, and it's not needed to have a different driver's license. But if it's a bigger one, you have to have uh, papers for this one, you have to have the technical inspection, the insurance guarantee, and the ID of the trailer. And the, a big important thing is to drive this one, you have to have another uh, driver's license and they, you have to do it in Portugal, okay? So if it's needed, the ACP all, uh, also have a driver's school and we have a, a, a training exam for this one that we can ask, that you can ask to us and to do uh, with us, okay? Uh, 
another important thing uh, for those who, who have uh, an hazard in the route, uh, it's important to know that uh, we have to put this sign, we have to use uh, this vest, so it's safer uh, for us. We have to put them uh, at this distance and uh, it's needed to see at 100 meters. If it's uh, put here, but it's not seen at 100 meters, we have to push them back so it's safer for us and for our car. So if you have an hazard, I can also give you the advice that the ACP has got the best driver's assistant in Portugal and you can call to us. We go to the place, we repair the, the car, we put, you, we put them on the trail again and if it's not possible, we can uh, leave uh, them at an office so uh, we can uh, make the, the repairs that you needed. Uh, another thing that is important is many drivers uh, do some um, uh, changes in our car. It's not authorized in Portugal because the car has some characteristics that are legally uh, obliged. So if you want to change some of them, you have to call to us, you have to ask for our help so we can submit to the, to the legal authorities and to change the wheels, to change the color, to change uh, many things that you want to change uh, in your car, okay? Uh, the, uh, also, it's important the, to know that uh, the uh, inspections, the technical inspections have a schedule to, to uh, break. So this one is important. Uh, if we have our car at the fourth year to do, to the news one, we have to go to the technical inspection then we have to go on the sixth year and the uh, eighth year. After that, we go all the years to the technical inspection, okay? Uh, the uh, traffic offenses have a classification that it's important to know. Uh, the lower ones we call LEV. It's the, uh, the only that we pay and we cannot uh, give any more contribution. Uh, but in the, the serious ones, we have a fine, but we have a suspension in our driver's license. This suspension, in these days, we have a system that we call the drivers, the points uh, in our driver's license. Uh, uh, in generally, our driver's license has 12 points. Uh, and if it's okay with our driver, I can uh, guarantee all the points. But if I make any mistakes, uh, they can um, break down our points. The, uh, the breakdowns are two points, four points in the, uh, some cases, or three or five points in the, the alcohol uh, or in some things like drugs. Uh, and uh, when we uh, got out all of our points, we have to do sometimes our training courses in ACP, uh, if, some, if some of you uh, uh, needed these ones in Portugal, is ACP that does. When you are only with five points, you have to come to the ACP today to do a, tri uh, a training course. So you cannot, uh, so if you cannot do the training course, you cannot maintain your driver's license and uh, it's needed to go to the ACP. Uh, and then uh, you have to do uh, in many times new exams so you can revalidate your driver's license. Uh, if I am a good driver, I started with 12 points. And uh, when, we, when, I, when I passed three years without no mistake, I uh, can uh, assure more three points. Uh, the maximum ones, it's 15 points. Uh, if I, uh, in my case, I can share with you that I have 15 points. Uh, because uh, I haven't made any uh, mistakes in the last years. So uh, I am uh, right now with 15 points. But uh, those ones who, who, who have uh, fines uh, or tickets, they cannot have 15. They are uh, 12, 10 or uh, less. Uh, and now, uh, if you want to, uh, a last advice, uh, me, even the, bit, the, the best drivers can make mistakes and the ACP gives you all the legal support 
if you needed to handle any uh, problem with fines or tickets in Portugal. Uh, in the DACP, we have the legal counseling and uh, we can help you to uh, pay and to uh, have a, a, big, a big help with this. So uh, if you want to be our associated, this is one of the many things that we can give you. Uh, for uh, leave you to the to the dinner because I think uh, many many of us uh, want to dinner. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, these are the last advices that I can give you. Uh, I call to your attention because uh, the alcohol, uh, the distractions of the mobile phones, uh, the speed are uh, one of the things that uh, you can uh, uh, have. You have to be more careful. Uh, if it's needed for anyone, uh, I give uh, an advice. In Portugal, the ACP, as you can see here, we give all the driver's support and the trainings and in the exams in our driver's school, in the, our training courses for those ones who want to, to drive a little bit more and with uh, more careful in Portugal. So uh, I hope you enjoyed, and if it's any question, I can uh, give you uh, some help. Absolutely wonderful, Umberto. Thank you so much. And that sounds like a great idea. If somebody is feeling um, not very confident coming to Portugal, you'll train them um, in, 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 and give them a course in driving, which, which will be a really good service. Discounts, of course, if you go via Expats Portugal, uh, find that benefit on our website, which uh, Sally or Jerry may well put. Uh, in the comments now. The big issue that the expats want to know about, Umberto and Isadora, thanks Isadora for all the work you've been doing behind the scenes as well tonight, um, is changing the licenses. This causes quite a lot of anxiety, I think, for people. When should that happen and can you help? We can help. Uh, okay. Isadora is, is uh, doing a great job because uh, we are a team uh, and I, I give some support and uh, she gives uh, the right uh, support in this area. But uh, in Portugal, uh, it's uh, uh, possible to change the driver's license. But uh, all of the people have a big problem because uh, it's uh, the, the person uh, of the driver's license at, uh, uh, at Portugal who, who have to go to the legal authority that we call EMT in Portugal. And uh, it's the, the person that uh, has the, uh, the, the work and, uh, and all the, uh, the, the, the treatment uh, in the EMT. But uh, if you want any help, uh, we can give you, because uh, to change the driver's license, one of the things that is needed is to have medical counsel. And in the ACP, we have that all the days uh, and uh, in our country. And uh, even if you are in Lisbon, in Oporto, in other cities, we can give you this support and you can uh, make the medical exam with us and we can give you all the information. So when you go to the EMT, you cannot uh, lose time and you can treat of all the process uh, with the right things to do, okay? Tremendous. And you get, a, you get a, an extra benefit there of finding out if you're of sane mind when uh, you uh, come to Portugal, which could be quite, yes. a, quite, a, quite a bonus. Um, but, but, uh, say, go, sorry, the, go on. No, no, uh, the, I, I want to uh, reinforce this. The, the difficult thing, uh, it's not uh, because of ACP. The difficult thing, it's the legal authority because uh, it's applied that uh, it's Umberto or it's uh, uh, Sally or, or, or Jerry that uh, wants to change his driver's license so uh, they have to go to the EMT by themselves. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to do that, it's first needed to uh, have some help of ACP. So if you want, you can call to ACP and we can help in that, okay? As with so many different things, the benefits are, are, are incredible. Um, and, you're, and, and the things you cover are quite extraordinary as well. So thank you so much, Imbrugge. Thank you, Isadora. Thank you. Let's go full circle here. Um, we have Maria, who's a, an electric vehicle driver who may wish to ha comment on this. Not a Tesla driver. Some of you might be glad to hear, um, judging by some of the comments earlier. on. What's, what's your view on this, Maria, on electric vehicles? And let's come back to ACP to see what the support is for uh, electric vehicles from ACP. Maria. Um, I'm very interested in, in uh, this ACP business. So I'll get back to that using the uh, link later. Um, 
I have an electric smart car. It's my second smart that I've bought in Portugal. I came to Portugal in July 2019 and I bought, a, some of you may have heard this stupid story. I bought a car off of Facebook marketplace site unseen, um, a gas a gas smart car. And it was fine, no problem. It was an old car and uh, kind of drove it into the ground. And I've had um, electric vehicles in America before, so I was used to them and it's always smart. I just never had the budget for the fancy Teslas. Um, and buying two at a time, imagine if he got points on that the uh, credit card. Um, so yeah, I have a smart car. It has a range of about 150 kilometers. I um, charge it at home infrequently. I'm charging it usually in the city because they have a very good uh, system for charging. It's point, hang on, I took a picture. It's 0 0.025 centimes for um, a minute of charging. And I charged my car the other day and it charged for 40, 40 minutes and it gave me a full, I was probably at 20%. It charged for 40 minutes. And so that's like a Euro to charge my car. And uh, the bonus is the charging station is right in the prime parking location. So I get a prime parking spot and I go and run my errands. In this case, I went to the Villerias market, to the antiques market, and I went and ran around and uh, had a place to a prime spot to park in town, came back and my vehicle is all charged up. Um, and that's I'm what actually, they say about you, isn't it, in tomorrow? There's that woman saving the planet again. There, there I go. You know, one one centim at a time. I um I'm actually we're putting solar panels in our um in our house next week, hopefully. And so that will change because right now, obviously, electricity at home is a little bit more expensive. The car takes about 10 hours to charge fully at home. And I haven't really seen that much of an uptick in our electrical bill. I think it probably, I think I probably end up paying about three euros a full charge, charging it at home. But once we have the solar panels put in, then I would just charge it during the day and just change my habits so that I'm you know, the day that I'm not using it, I'm charging it up. Um, but I live outside of Tamar, seven kilometers outside of Tamar. And I usually run into town twice a day, let's say, let's say, you know, 10 times a week I'm going in. So um, that's 140 kilometers. So theoretically, I'd be able to do it all in one charge per week. But then you turn the AC on, you turn the radio on, you know, and that all eats up a little bit. But I was very happy with the deal I got. It's a 2021 car. It was, um, it had already been matriculated as part of a sales promotion with the, um, with the car dealership. So driving it, because it had already been driven off the lot, it was like a 3000 euro discount, but it was brand new. It had like 10 kilometers on it. And so that was very good. I didn't have to go through any of that process. And, um, yeah, I think it was 22,000, then it came down to 19,000. And um, I thought that was, you know, it's expensive, but, you know, I'm not paying for gas. And for me, a smart car, you know, I have I have business, I have a little short term rental. So I'm constantly going with laundry and pieces. You know, you you can't imagine what you can fit in a smart car. I can pit, I can fit five big Ikea, you know, blue bags full of uh, dirty laundry into uh, the smart car. So everybody understands that the, yeah. the, the unit of <laughs> that's that my unit. unit yes, that's yes, my that's unit of measurement. The international yes. Ikea blue bag. Yes. Measurement. Maria, thank you so much. I'm, I'm afraid everybody, we have to leave it there. That's a great place to end it, Maria, with your, your, your uh, happy experience of using electric vehicle, the smart car. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Isadora and Humberto, uh, joining us from ACP. Do join up, folks. We give a discount uh, via Expats Portugal. If you go into the uh, perks and benefits area of our business directory, you'll see that. And thank you to Ugo and Nuno who were with us before. And thanks to all of you uh, for your, well, for most of your comments tonight anyway. Uh, have a great rest of the evening and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.